No matter how much money you've got invested in your race car, when it comes to performance on the racetrack, it all comes down to the contact patch between your four tyres and the racetrack surface. And of course, the wheel alignment is essential to optimise that contact patch. We're here with James from Jota Sport to find out a little bit more about wheel alignment, although admittedly, this is at the upper echelon of motorsport with their LMP2 race car. So James, getting that wheel alignment sorted out in the first place obviously starts here in the workshop. Now you've got a reasonably special setup that I want to talk through yep. and it starts with the surface that the car's set up on. It's not just on your normal workshop floor, you've got a very special steel plate that the, the car is set up on. Tell us what's so special about that. Well this surface table is checked every year basically so it's completely flat um, and it's a good reference for us when we go to fly away basically international races. This is a good benchmark to start with um, and after every event it comes back and we just know that the car is spot on. So you've got a perfectly flat, perfectly level surface, so this is essential when it comes particularly to aspects such as corner weighting, which we're yeah. going to touch on briefly. But as you've just mentioned, uh, you're, you're doing your setup here in the workshop, then you're flying away to another event where potentially you're not going to have a perfectly flat surface. So how does getting your setup here done in the workshop allow you to confirm everything at the track? Yeah, so basically what we do with um, our scales is that every scale is levelled, um, and then we use a starret to ensure that at the circuit we try and replicate this surface table as best as possible. And then once you've got the car set up at the track, you can then compare your setup values from here in the workshop to what you're seeing at the track? Yep, that's it. And with a small tolerance, we then use that as our new baseline. So if there's a kilo or two out when we get to the circuit, we see that as acceptable. And then that is our baseline to then repeat throughout the event. So with the, the alignment set up, you've just talked about the, the corner weights and yep. again we're going to come back to that, but the other aspects we're normally looking at here are camber and toe. So you can, can you tell us, starting with camber, what are you using, what equipment are you using to measure the camber? So we use a digital camber gauge, um, which is also zeroed and we check the tolerances out all the time. Um, and that is basically placed against our setup wheel and that is our reading basically that we take. Now, actually, compared to how we would set up the alignment on a conventional road-going car, it's quite different because, as we can see here behind us, uh, the car has no wheels on it. So can you just talk us through those setup plates and why you use those, how they work? Yeah, basically it's um, a machine piece of billet um, and we can just ensure um, that there's no deflection um, and it's repeatable, so we eliminate the tyre, we eliminate anything that's movable. Um, and essentially, yeah, that is it, just to eliminate any discrepancies and just be consistent with it. Okay, so you've talked about the camber there, measuring toe. Now, again, coming from a road car background, yeah. uh, particularly the hobbyist enthusiast level, it's quite common to take your car along to a wheel alignment, a specialist where they're maybe using a laser or camera-based yeah. wheel alignment machine, and instead, behind me, you're using strings to set this up. Yeah. Now, a lot of people might think on face value this sounds backyardish yeah. or, or pretty rudimentary, but again, you, you're operating at LMP2. This is very high-level motorsport, and strings are still acceptable. Can you tell us why you favour strings and, and how they work? Uh, I just feel that they can be measured, and it, it's a quantity that can be seen. And obviously, with flying around the world, it's something that can be constantly checked and zeroed. Um, whereas with lasers, if you have a system that's complex um, and it goes out of tolerance, you're sort of in a position where you may not be able to rectify that or even spot it. I think probably it's important to mention again at the hobbyist level, uh, people are taking their car to a, a wheel alignment specialist, they don't have a, a portable laser alignment yeah. system. So that's fine, but the problem is there, you can't make any adjustments at the track, whereas the string system uh, affords you a lot more flexibility. Can you just talk about the principles behind string wheel alignment? Because what we're really talking about here is uh, a way of accurately measuring the toe on each corner of the car. Yeah. So how does the string system work and how does it allow that to be measured? Um, basically on our setup wheel we have a flag at the front um, and the rear of the wheel and then we use just a conventional ruler, take a measurement off the front and the rear and the difference is in our toe figure. Okay, so you've got, you're measuring out from those little flags out to the string that you've got run down each side of the car. So the, the key point there as well is the two strings that you've got running down each side of the car yeah. must be absolutely parallel. Correct, yeah. So you've got a, a really special setup that's all machined particular to the car so that you can just fit it and you know that those strings are set up correctly? Yeah, that's correct. Yep. So we have um, a Zimmer front and rear and then our ride height bars are then fixed to that uh, set dimension. 
um, and that is our baseline again. So, so that Zimmer you just mentioned, this is a, a frame essentially that bolts to uh, take up points on the front of the chassis in place of the front nose cone and there at the rear of the back of the transaxle, is that correct? Yes, correct, yep. So it's ensuring every time the setup goes onto the car, you've got those strings in exactly the same location, again just making things nice and quick, repeatable and precise? Yeah, that's correct. We do uh, measure us because obviously the bars are adjustable. We do check that measurement every time you set the car up just to ensure nothing's moved. Um, and again, those lines are still parallel. Okay, so we've talked about the tow and we've talked about the camera and those are two of those main factors that the, the team may be changing at a race event based on uh, the track that the car comp is competing on and also the, the weather conditions. The other aspect that uh, I just want to talk about briefly here is the corner weight. So you've got the car set up on some corner weight scales, so that's measuring the weight on each corner of the car. Why is that important and what are you using that information for? Um, I think fundamentally weight distribution, um, how much rakes in the car I think is monitored by the engineers um, and also uh, from a, a braking performance perspective if the corner weights are out and you have uneven corner weights across the front you're going to get uneven braking and then obviously that's not desirable. So again this is very different from our average road cars where we can get quite a variation in corner weight and, and it's not going to m maybe be the end of the world but with a car that's this precise, this well set up, if you've got a variation in the weight on each of the front wheels when you're hard under brakes this could end up with one, one side of the car locking up for the other? Yeah that's correct, yep. Can you tell us what sort of tolerance you work to in terms of corner weight at the front of the car? Um, when we set the car up we work to one kilo across the front um, and it's less than 10 across the rear. Okay, so these numbers again we probably would be struggling to chase with a standard production car just because of the general weight distribution in the yeah. car. You've got a, a car that's purely set up from the outset as a, as a racing car so everything's a lot closer right from the get go? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Now off camera we're also talking about setting up spare components, uh, so once you've actually got your suspension set up correct, uh, you're able to go through and measure uh, the length of all of the push rods, so uh, why is that beneficial, how does that help you? Well basically we will measure track arms, push rods um, and camber shims and then that allows us to set up our spare corner so in the event of an accident in the race or, um, or any sort of damage we can then basically fit our spare corner straight away and in and basically ensure that the car is set up. So you could you could fit something and if it's not measured correctly the car could go out and just not handle. So it basically means that in the event of a minor accident where you're replacing a corner of the car uh, that you don't need to waste even more time than going through another setup before the driver can go back yes. out. Yeah that's correct yeah. All right, last point I wanted to talk about there is the ride height which you've mentioned. So uh, is there a specification first of all on the minimum ride height for these cars that you have to stick to or is this more a, a case of your own personal setup? It's personal setup um, but due to the skids underneath the floor, um, if, there's, if the car is too low they'll wear excessively below the limit and then will be excluded. So there isn't a minimum ride height as such but the ride height is dictated by that skid wear. Uh, that uh, skid on the underside of the car, essentially it's a, a motorsport level uh, plywood for want That's of a better it, yeah. term, so uh, you start with that at uh, what 25 millimetres thickness it. and what are you allowed to run down to? Uh, 20 is a minimum. Look James, it's been great to get some insight into the car and that setup there and, and again while you're operating at the LMP2 level and your string alignment setup is definitely a little bit more extreme than what we see uh, at uh, the hobbyist and enthusiast level of motorsport, this is still something that is totally applicable uh, to everyday street cars and uh, those attending track day, cars, uh, track day events, so thanks for the chat there. No worries. Thank you.